ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട സ്വഭാവങ്ങളെ ബഹുമാനപ്പെട്ട ഗവർണർ Honorable Speaker, Chief Minister, Ministers, Leader of the Opposition, and Members, it's my honor and privilege to address the august body of representatives of the people of Kerala, marking the beginning of the eighth session of the 15th Kerala Legislative Assembly. My government envisions building of a modern developed Kerala, Nava Keralam. We focus on digital and technological progress, scientific temper, and new levels of production and decent employment, particularly for the youth who are entering the labor force. 
equal emphasis is also given to provide social security to all deserving sections of our society. According to the latest report of the Reserve Bank of India on state finances, Kerala is one of the relatively better off among the states regarding innovation index addressing environmental concerns and providing wide social security net. I am happy to note that Kerala has achieved remarkable economic growth, 12% at constant prices and 17% at current prices. Kerala is a pioneering state in the country where decentralized decision making has catalyzed developmental activities by ensuring people's participation. My government's relentless endeavor to achieve holistic and sustainable development of the state has been recognized time and again by the government of India and reputed international entities. Kerala has been ranked at the forefront among the states in the achievement of sustainable development goals consistently by the Niti Aayog. In the overall public affairs index also, Kerala ranks forefront. Kerala won the Voyo Shreshta Samman 2021 of the Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment, Government of India, as India's best state in caring for elderly people. My government has put in place a comprehensive medical insurance for the serving and retired employees. This is a unique with a substantial coverage of 30 lakh members. My government would vigorously pursue its development agenda with focus on the most vulnerable sections. It is with this in mind that my government undertook a survey to identify extreme poverty in early 22, which identified 64,006 extremely poor families across Kerala. The findings of the survey are broadly in line with the findings of the Niti Aayog baseline report on multidimensional poverty index which indicated that multidimensional poverty in Kerala is only 0.7%, the lowest in the country. My government is committed to uplifting these extremely poor and vulnerable families from their present state for which micro plans are being drawn up in collaboration with Kutum Shri and the local governments. My government is committed to land and housing for all in both rural and urban areas. Under the AGs of the Life Mission, launched in 2016, 322922 houses and four multi-storied complexes have been completed as on 15th January 2023. My government is relentlessly pursuing efforts to transform governance in the state to a people-centric, technology-driven, outcome-oriented, digital governance system. All departments and public institutions transact their work through the e-office digital platform. More than 1,900 services have been made online. The integrated local government management system 
has been operationalized in all gram panchayats of the state. The K Smart application for urban local bodies will be rolled out by April 1st, 2023. I am happy to note that this would revolutionize service delivery in urban local bodies. Dashboards have been set up for tracking progress of applications and service delivery in local governments as well as government departments with citizen interface. In order to address the issue of unemployment, my government initiated a massive program, the Kerala Knowledge Economy Mission, with the aim of creating 20 lakh jobs in the economy within the next five years. The India Skills Report 2022 ranks Kerala third among the states in terms of employability of its youth. I am also happy to note that the concerted efforts taken by my government in improving investment atmosphere of the state have started bearing fruit. My government took several path-breaking initiatives to transform the investment at atmosphere to a business-friendly one. The Girivans redressal mechanism, centralized inspection system, timely license approval mechanism for MSMEs and non-MSMEs have enabled us to make great strides in inve investment facilitation. Due to these progressive initiatives of the state government, Kerala has improved its position in the ease of doing business, ranking my government, ease of doing business ranking. My government will continue to bring in reforms in the investment arena and modernize and amend laws, rules and regulations to facilitate and simplify approvals for investment in the state. <coughs> I would like to make a special mention of the role played by Kutum Shri Mission in empowering women of Kerala socially, economically, and politically. I feel happy and proud to note that Kutum Shri is celebrating its Silver Jubilee in 2023. My government is committed to protect constitutional values which are presently facing many challenges to defend democracy, secularism, plural values and federalism, the important foundations of our national unity and part of the basic structure of the Constitution, we need to take special efforts, hegemonic tendencies in religious, linguistic and other arenas hamper building of a robust democracy which respects diversity for strengthening its unity. A strong nation has to have a strong center, empowered states, and actively functioning local governments. For the body politic of the nation to be strong, it needs strong limbs. States have heavy responsibilities in the social sector, and their fiscal position has to be strong. Recent measures to curtail the borrowing limits of the states, constrain the scope of their interventions in the health, education, and infrastructural sectors, while fiscal discipline has to be enforced in right earnest. There cannot be different districts for state governments 
which are not ma made applicable to the union government. Our constitution has provided legislative space for the union and the states. Incursions into the legislative domain of the states do not augur well for a cooperative federal setup. Checks and balances, checks and balances in the system have to be scrupulously observed for the healthy functioning of our democratic polity. Legislative assemblies represent the will of the people, the spirit of legislation and the intention of the legislature has to be protected. My government is, my government is committed to the constitutional value that intention of the legislature should take effect as law. Similarly, the freedom of the press is a cardinal feature of every strong democratic society. Free and fair media activities are to be protected. Some instances of curtailing the freedom of the press in different ways are coming up in some parts of the country. My government is always committed to protect the freedom of the press. Here it needs, here it needs to be underscored that even remotely a perception that agencies empowered to investigate matters regarding compliance to laws are acting in a manner which deviates from the professionalism expected from them. Agriculture and allied sectors. My government is cognizant of the need for adoption of a mission mode program to enhance farmer incomes through value addition as well as productivity enhancement and to build resilience to Kerala's agriculture, to climate and biotic stresses. With this objective in mind, my government has commenced a multi-departmental initiative, the Value Added Agricultural Mission, to realize the potential for value addition in agricultural products in the state. As announced in the budget of 22-23, the Agriculture Department is floating a company, Kerala Agri-Business Company, to accelerate agri-business projects and agro-food parks in the state. As implemented in Aluva State Seed Farm, more activities in organic and natural farming will be initiated during 2023-24. Farming systems that can regenerate degraded lands and prevent losses to the arable lands using adequate conservation measures have been attempted <coughs> by the department. Adequate thrust will be given to the plantation sector in 23-24. The existing special livestock breeding program of animal husbandry department will be implemented in a revamped manner. More emphasis will be provided for strengthening quality doorstep veterinary service delivery to farmers. Mobile veterinary surgery units with advanced diagnostic and treatment facilities will be established as part of a rebuilt Kerala initiative program. The department will continue the comprehensive livestock insurance scheme Go, go Samriddhi with the lowest premium rates. Interventions by the Dairy Development Department to supplement clinical 
and animal health management practices have helped Kerala attain self-sufficiency in milk production. The department has inducted high-yielding cross-breed cows and heifers to the existing cattle population of the state. The department will carry out a special quality assurance drive for detection of aflatoxin and antibiotic residues in milk, milk products and cattle feed. Further quality assurance drive for certified milk will also be completed. My government proposes to bring in a comprehensive amendment in the cooperative law with a view to improving the activities in the cooperative sector and to check corrupt practices in the sector. The draft bill for amending the Act was presented before the Assembly. The Kerala Sahakarna Samrakshana Nidhi, when implemented, will streamline investment in cooperative societies and revive distressed cooperative societies. A unified software system has been introduced for the State Cooperative Bank Sahkaranam Sahuridam was introduced to disperse loans to persons with disabilities for starting business ventures. Fisheries sector continues to be a high priority sector for my government. The department will strengthen efforts to promote aquaculture activities through diversification of species, adoption of innovative technologies and area expansion. Another focus area is modernization of fishing fleet of the state to better standards in a phased manner. The social security of fishermen is a major thrust area of my government the department will continue the scheme of insurance coverage to all the fishermen and the fishing implements of traditional fishermen. My government has also prioritized projects for provision of safe dwelling for the fishermen coastal population by rehabilitating those living in erosion-prone areas through the flagship program Punar Geham, 1473 individual houses and 390 flats have been completed and handed over to the beneficiaries. The Harbor Engineering Department will continue its activities for modernization of fisheries infrastructures, fishing harbors, and fish markets. Under new projects, the department will take up construction of 660 flats for an amount of rupees 120.63 crores at Muttatara in Tiruvananthapuram Koiladi in Kasargol, Unial and Ponani in Malapuram. My government, through the Pothu Vidya Bhyas Samrakshana Yagnam and the Vidya Kiranam projects, have brought in holistic reforms in the education sector. Innovative schemes are under implementation to stimulate creativity and inculcate scientific temper in students. The departmental data shows that 
वन वन नाइन नाइन सेवन जीरो स्टूडेंट्स शिफ्टेड फ्रॉम अन एडिड स्कूल एंड फ्रॉम अदर सिलेबाई स्कूल टू गवर्नमेंट एंड गवर्नमेंटल एडिड स्कूल इन केरला इन ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री दिस इज इंडीड एन एंडोर्समेंट ऑफ द टॉप क्वालिटी एजुकेशन प्रोवाइडेड बाई द जनरल एजुकेशन डिपार्टमेंट एंड द टॉप क्लास इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर in these institutions the school curriculum will be modified highlighting the uniqueness and richness of kerala culture that curriculum of vocational higher secondary students would be made more skill oriented the government also intends to streamline english learning and teaching through innovative programs <coughs> the department would strive to create a differently abled friendly environment in schools without losing sight of inclusive education the department proposes construction of autism parks in schools and enhanced financial assistance for institutions for mentally challenged children my government is acutely aware of the menace posed by the misuse of drugs and is implementing a host of programs in collaboration with various departments to prevent students from falling into the drug trap Kerala's higher education sector has had notable achievements as can be seen from NAC ranking received by the higher education centers of state my government is of the view that much needs to be done to make kerala a destination of higher education we are taking steps in this direction my government is keen the democratic secular and inclusive nature of our higher education sector is preserved and protected the higher education department aims to transform the state into knowledge society by facilitating the generation and translation of new knowledge the department is preparing novel academic programs in emerging disciplines with renewed focus on research and skill upgradation in its attempt to revamp the curricular for higher education courses the department is contemplating modification of undergraduate programs the higher education curriculum framework will be formulated by kerala state higher education council after stakeholder consultations the proposed kerala language network shall undertake <clears throat> various initiatives for the development of malayalam as a language of knowledge chief ministers Na- nava kerala post doctoral fellowship was awarded to 77 candidates for undertaking quality research in different core disciplines kerala has made significant gains in the health sector with the lowest infant and maternal mortality rates the highest life expectancy and best sex ratio in india my government under the aegis of ardhram mission 2 aims to complete the reengineering of the health system through standardizing all health care facilities from sub centers to medical colleges ensuring patient access to quality health care services and reducing out of pocket expenditure the conversion of primary health centers to family health centers with adequate supply of medicines and a short treatment protocols has enhanced the trust of the people in the public health system 
My government is cognizant of the increased incidence of non-communicable diseases in our population. The health department does <coughs> annual screening of citizens over 30 years for early detection and treatment of hypertension, diabetes, and cancer. All health facilities in the state have been mapped to cancer centers as part of the cancer grid. The department runs campaign for promoting healthy lifestyles and carries out community surveillance for zoonotic diseases. Kolam and Kotayam districts are gearing towards declaration of elimination of filariasis by March 2023, the first phase of the One Health project <coughs> has started in Patalam Titta, <coughs> Elapula, Kotayam and Idiki districts. Ayush Department will continue its focus on preventive, promotive and rehabilitative aspects of health care and health and wellness. The department is preparing the blueprint of a project on Ayush Medical Value Tourism, which will lay down clear guidelines and standards for wellness applications in tourist resorts. Kerala is the first state in the nation to complete 100% Aadhaar seeding of all ration cards. As part of the diversification of ration shops, K-Store project has been launched to provide various products services. I am happy to note that 6,690 Antyo De Anayojana cards and 264762 priority household cards were issued to those eligible. A special consideration was given to families which have members with terminal illness, disability of children with autism. Steps have been taken to provide Aadhaar seeded rather ration cards to people living on the streets and tenants who do not possess requisite certificates. I am happy to note that 85,69,583 free onam kits containing 14 essential items including cloth bags prepared by Supply co were distributed to all households in the state through ration shops. That this was done despite the financial constraints of the state portrays the pro people approach of my government. The Institute of Advanced Virology functioning at the Life Science Park, Tonakkal, Tiruvananthapuram, has established infrastructure and human resources required to carry out high-end research in advanced virology. The Women and Child Development Department continues to focus on the overall health and nutrition status of women and children. The department is planning a long-term campaign in order to achieve the three dimensions of gender equality equal opportunity, equal voice, and freedom from violence. My government will prepare a comprehensive plan for the establishment of community disability management centers and integrated rehabilitation villages at the local government level with the technical support of National Institute for Speech and Hearing. My government would be drawing up a strategy to address the special needs of the elderly. 
under the aegis of Vatil Padi Sevanam, various services were provided to the bedridden and disabled senior citizens at their homes, such as delivery of emergency medicines, organization of home visits by medical teams, palliative care, etc. The Scheduled Caste Development Department is preparing the outline of a program, Training for Career Excellence, <coughs> for providing internship and placement training for professionals and graduate SC youth. A green income program for solar electrification of houses of scheduled caste families has been worked out. This would enable them to generate income by selling surplus electricity to KSEB. The department plans to generate health cards to record the health and nutritional status of students in model residential schools. My government intends to prepare micro plans for all tribal settlements, giving priority to projects for providing basic amenities like road, drinking water, electricity, internet connection in all the tribal settlements in the state. Action has been initiated for setting up of a special mobile medical clinic in Attapadi. Ada Malakudi special package has been rolled out. The Minority Welfare Department implements a host of welfare programs for bridging identified development gaps of the minority communities in Kerala. The, the department is also preparing the blueprint of an action plan with focus on skilling of the unskilled youth, especially in new and emerging areas. My government notes the recent decision of the union government in having stopped the pre-metric scholarship to the backward class and minority students of class 1 to 8. My government apprehends that this decision may trigger lesser enrollment and higher dropout of students from marginalized sections. 2022 marked the 25th year of the Big Bang decentralization exercise which was rolled out in 1997. The local governments of Kerala have become partners with the state government in its development activities consequent to the transfer of funds, functions and functionaries. The pivotal role played by the LSGD in the development story of the state needs a special mention. The integration of five line departments under local self-government is a historical and revolutionary policy decision of my government. This will improve the quality and place the delivery of service to the common man. The Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme continues to provide succor to jobless families driven by poverty. As on 18 January 23, the scheme has generated 7.24 crore person days of employment, providing support to 14.85 lakh families, an amount of rupees 22,266.96 crores has been provided as wages. Women continue to be the major labor force under the scheme in Kerala, with women person days being 
89.45 percent of the total person days generated in the current year. The total employment generated this year also would cross 10 crore person days the third year in a row with more than 10 crore person days. Under the Tribal Plus scheme, my government provides wages from state funds for additional 100 days of employment for the scheduled tribe families. <clears throat> I am happy to note that Kerala is the only state where additional employment is generated for ST beneficiaries of Manrega through a separate state supported scheme. My government continues to give thrust to the Ayankal Urban Employment Guarantee Scheme. The first such scheme for urban employment implemented in any Indian state. The budget outlay for the scheme was increased to rupees 125 crores in 22-23. My government has embarked on preparation of risk-informed master plans to make cities disaster resilient and safe. Such plans prepared scientifically by layering 29 maps have been done for Chenganur and Manantawadi towns and initiated for 10 towns in the Pamba Basin under Rebuild Kerala Initiative. In order to monitor the waste management activities in all local bodies, Harith Kerala Mission and Suchitwa Mission through Keltron have developed the Haritam Amritam application. The contamination of water bodies by coliform bacteria is a serious problem we are facing. My government is taking steps to ameliorate the situation. Kerala has augmented the activities under liquid waste management by pooling resources from various schemes. The state government reported to the National Green Tribunal that an amount of rupees 2343.81 crore has been ring fenced for liquid waste management. It is a matter of immense satisfaction for my government that the NGT at its sitting on December 1st, 2022, acknowledged the commitment of the state government and issued orders that it was not necessary to levy compensation from Kerala. Under the Manasoditri Mannu campaign launched by Life Mission, soliciting voluntary contribution of land from individuals, institutions and agencies, an extent of 23.62 acre of land has been promised to Life Mission till 15 January 2023, an international conclave to showcase Kutumshiri is planned on the occasion of the 25th year of its formation in May 2023. Kutumshiri conducted Sudridam campaign for inclusion of more beneficiaries, after which 69590 new members joined the network. The Kerala Institute for Local Administration developed the Local Indicator Framework, a web portal based dashboard for ranking the local bodies in their implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals. My government has taken several initiatives to improve the business-friendly atmosphere in the state. The new India Steel policy has been formulated with the objective to tap 
the strength of the state and foster investment in sunrise priority sectors. A special focus is being placed on upgrading skills of youth for future jobs, industries and technologies of the fourth industrial revolution. My government has declared the year 22-23 as the year of enterprises and launched the innovative flagship One Lakh Enterprises Scheme. It is not a mean achievement that since the inception of the scheme, a total of 123968 micro, small and medium enterprises have been started in the state, which in turn has paved the way for an investment of 7,517 crores and an employment generation of 2,67,196 persons. This scheme has been selected as the best practice in the MSME sector by the Government of India. My government is in the process of establishing the International Exhibition Come Convention Center Palakkad High Tech Industrial Corridor, the Global Industrial Financial and Trade City, Petrochemical Park, Spices Park, Rubber Park. The mining survey process will be automated to bring in more transparency and the Kerala online mining permit awarding services will be strengthened. I am happy to note that in 21-22, 21 PSUs made operating profit. The closed Hindustan Newspaper Limited and BHEL EML were taken over by the state government from union government and these units have resumed production, which is an alternate development model put forward by state to protect PSU. The Kerala Public Enterprises Selection and Recruitment Board will be operationalized during 23-24. My government has constituted expert committees in coir, cashew and handloom sectors for a comprehensive review of these sectors. Kerala State IT Mission released the e-district application version 2 with more services and modules. Digital Kerala architecture will be implemented with extensive use of data analytics. Universities will be enabled to issue certificates and mark lists through national academic Depository DigiLocker. Kerala Startup Mission will implement the Startup Infinity for setting up a launch pad to select countries and Kerala Startup Commons, a unique one stop platform for technical and business support for the startups. The government IT parks added 258 new companies last year and registered a revenue growth of 2,993 crores. KSITIL will implement community skill parks project for providing world-class industry-relevant skills. The digital university has entered into MOU with four foreign universities for research and academics. The university has developed and launched an extensive mobile application KKEM Jalakam with integrated web dashboard for conducting household based job seeker survey as part of Kerala Knowledge Economy Mission. My government has taken all out efforts to ensure the welfare of the guest workers an Atithi portal is functional for registration of interstate migrant workers. A Todi Seva application was developed for registering the complaints of the general public 
on various issues and disputes. Employment Department is in the process of transforming conventional employment exchanges to e-employment exchanges. My government proposes to implement Karamchari scheme to provide part-time jobs to the students while they are studying and a scheme for reskilling of employees. I am happy to note that Kerala Knowledge Economy Mission established under Kerala Development and Innovation Strategic Council has identified 53 lakh potential job seekers, more than 11 lakh job seekers and 2,525 employees have registered on the digital workforce management system. A public interface of the local government level has been initiated through Todil Sabha, 882 Todil Sabha have been completed so far. One local government, one idea, program would be operationalized in 100 local governments targeting innovative problem solving and promoting local economic development and entrepreneurship. I am happy to note that there is a conducive policy framework for the infrastructure sector. My government has ensured all necessary assistance for the timely completion of National Highway 66. The Pothole Ferry Kerala project is under implementation. A comprehensive design policy is on the anvil. A special plan will be formulated to make the PWD villages iconic. The Public Works Department will make roads leading to tourism destinations as model green and safe corridors. The Department proposes to adopt advanced technology in the construction sector, sector and to promote construction using rubber, coir, <coughs> geotextiles, plastic and prefab structures. The Kerala Maritime Board has established all necessary infrastructure facilities at important minor port for facilitating coastal shipping. The board also plans to start cruise shipping operations based at Bepur, Kolam, Azikal, and Ponani port in a phased manner. The Water Resource Department has provided functional household trap connections to more than 15 lakh rural households as on 15 January 2023 under the ages of Jal Jeevan mission in 23-24. Kerala has been taking a consistent stand that while sufficient water should be given to Tamil Nadu, a new dam needs to be constructed, considering the grave threats posed by existing aged Mulla Periyar Dam. A comprehensive project to protect the Periyar River Bank in the Mulla Periyar area. The state's share of water in Pambar Basin, awarded by Kaveri Water Dispute Tribunal, is 3 TMC. Once Pattaseri Dam is completed and functional, 0.075 TMC of water could be effectively utilized. Water Resources Department will establish an irrigation museum at Cherutoni, Iduki for imparting knowledge to the new generation about the dams and irrigation techniques and will also take steps to promote irrigation tourism in a long way in connection with power generation at Mula Mattum, a project is envisaged to ensure continuous flow 
of water to Meenachil River through the Meenachil River Valley Integration Project, a comprehensive Meenachil flood mitigation survey will be undertaken to analyze the reasons for flooding of Pala and downstream areas during peak monsoon period. My government will continue works related to strengthening of vulnerable coastal stretches, leveraging innovative technologies like geotubes, trailer pods, diaphragm walls, ten coastal area prone to sea erosion have been identified as hot spot. My government is keen on establishing faster, greener and efficient transportation facilities for the public. My government's dream proposal Silver Line, a semi-high speed rail infrastructure project would be a fast, safe and convenient mode of transport for the travelling public. The detailed project report has been approved by the state government and submitted to Ministry of Railway <coughs> for final approval. Kalashiri Mesuru new broad gauge rail line via Kalpeta and the Nilambur Nanjagund rail project are other projects that my government intends to implement. The state government has also agreed to share 50% cost of Angna Mali Sabri rail line. West Coast Canal, when completed, would be the main arterial waterway in the state, connecting Kovalam in the south with Bakel in the north. On completion, the canal would facilitate easy transportation of goods and freight. Kerala State Electricity Board is committed to providing uninterrupted quality power at affordable prices and has made investment for augmenting domestic power generation from 30% to 50% of the total peak demand. Efforts will, will be made to capitalize central assistance for flood control dams and commission multitask hydro projects. This will not only cater to our internal power requirements for the next decade, but will enable us to export surplus power too. My government will be bringing out guidelines for development of sustainable energy sources, such as for floating solar power plants in water bodies, abandoned quarries, and degraded barren land. Kerala is expecting a boom in e-mobility in the coming years. My government will take steps to establish enabling EV charging infrastructure facilities to meet the requirement. The state action plan on climate change has been revised, keeping in view the vulnerabilities of various sectors. A climate change knowledge portal will be developed to provide data on historic and future climate vulnerabilities and impacts. My government plans to inventorize the greenhouse gas emissions of various sectors. Harith Kerala Mission has launched a campaign highlighting net zero emission targets. The Kerala State Biodiversity Board completed the preparation of a state biodiversity strategies and action plan. Forest Department will chalk out an effective strategy to check incidents of main animal conflict and to provide more benefits to the victims. Rapid response teams have been established in high conflict zone areas. The alertries and forest stations will be further strengthened. Kerala is prone to 17 natural hazards and 22 anthropogenic hazards that have disaster potential. The disaster management 
literacy program will equip the general public in disaster preparation and mitigation. The Kerala Disaster Management Authority has followed into innovative resilience building measures with a long term perspective. KSDMA has developed the Kerala Warnings, Hazards and Crisis Department Management System, which is India's first integrated clouds based early warning system. Attempts will be made to downscale the scenarios using a coordinated regional climate downscaling experiment. The Kerala State Land Use Board proposes to strengthen the Geoinformatics Lab as a geospatial data repository on natural resources for the entire state. Rebuild Kerala Initiative is the dedicated state-level institutional modality for formulating and coordinating the implementation of a resilient Kerala and is mandated to develop, coordinate, facilitate and monitor the Rebuild Kerala Development Program. My government intends to bring out radical changes in the property registration sector as part of the ease of doing business initiatives in the state. The existing registration application system, PAL, will be redesigned and emerging with emerging technologies. Consent-based Aadhaar integration will be done for identification of parties to a document. The GST department is being re restructured in accordance with the requirement of new GST law. Taxpayer services will, will be provided with utmost efficiency, while tax evasion will be tacked with stringency. The new system will also reduce the dispute between the taxpayer and the department. The department introduced a taxpayer card with a rating of taxpayers based on accurate and timely filling of returns. A virtual IT cadre was formed in the GST department to drive the e-governance project of the department. The department implemented the Lucky Bill application scheme in association with the Digital University of Kerala to encourage people to ask for bills for their purchases. Kerala Lottery provides a means for livelihood to more than one lakh agents. The department conducted the Onam Bumper Lottery in 2022 with the highest ever first prize of 25 crore. The Kerala State Infrastructure Investment Fund Board has contributed to infrastructure development of the state using funds received from the government by way of motor vehicle tax and petroleum sales and also by loan of 19,197 crore from both domestic and financial markets. The union government's revised decision to include loans availed of by KIIFV also within the ambit of Kerala overall borrowing limits thereby severely restricting the state's borrowing capacity. I would like to bring to the attention of this House that this would reduce the fiscal space for the government for furthering its development priority and would constrain the state's resources. My government has submitted a memorandum to the union government in this regard. At this juncture, I hope that the question of fiscal federalism in the country is to be addressed in a very positive way by the Union Government. Under the Treasury Infrastructure Development of the o Infrastructure Development of Offices under Treasury Department has been prioritized. ETRs, an online application for accepting government revenues. Kerala Financial Corporation continues to be the most efficiently performing state financial corporation of the country. My government is implementing an action plan to eliminate the misuse of drugs and intoxicants in society, especially among the students and the youth. Awareness activities are also being carried out 
under the auspices of Vimukti Mission to make the people aware of the harmful aspects of intoxicating substances. The Home Department has launched Yodhav to check the meanness of narcotic drugs in society. My government launched a No to Drugs campaign on October 2, 2022, coordinating the activities of all stakeholders in all nine departments. My government proposes to enact a Land Settlement Act and is considering enabling provision for legal occupiers of the land to get a conclusive title regarding ownership, authentic survey documents, which would be obtained through the ongoing digital survey in the state would be taken into consideration while <coughs> implementing <coughs> the provisions of the Act. I am happy to bring to the notice of the August House that 54,535 families have become landowners in the first year of government's tenure. A Pataiam mission will be implemented to achieve the objective of providing Pataiam to all eligible persons. My government has implemented Aadhaar based unique Thandapur system, the first of its kind in India. On the completion of the digital survey, all Thandapars in the state will come under the unique Thandapar system. The steps will be taken to upgrade the, all the village officers in Kerala to smart village offices. I am happy to announce that a pilot project will be introduced to transform revenue offices as transparent service centers with the specially trained staff, minimum waiting time, effective complaint redresser mechanism and social audit in selected 15 villages in this year. My government has launched its dream project, Digital Survey. Accordingly, all records of the survey officers in the state will be digitized. Digital survey in the state will be completed within the tenure of my government. My government created the directorate of Samuhika Sanna Dasa Sena to promote volunteerism in the state in the light of floods and COVID pandemic. 3.5 lakh volunteers have registered under Samuhika as volunteers. Kerala Police has the reputation as one of the best managed state police force in the country. All police stations in Kerala are now under CCTV surveillance, automated number plate recognition cameras with facial recognition and a special application for locked house monitoring system have been implemented. A student police cadet project has been extended to 100 new schools. A separate economic offence wing has been established for exclusive inquiry of economic offences. The Prison and Correctional Service Department has achieved remarkable progress in ensuring correction, reformation and rehabilitation of prisoners. Fire outposts at high range areas and efficient rescue system in new high rise buildings are being proposed to be implemented by the Fire and Rescue Services Department. I am happy to note that e-filling facility has been introduced I am happy to note that e-filing facility has been introduced in the High Court in a phased manner with effect from 1st October 2022. This would be one step forward in implementation of paperless courts and digitization of entire court proceedings. The data center in High Court and model digital courtrooms for the district judiciary will be operationalized. Fingerprint-based biometric card punching attendance system has also been introduced in the courts. 23 fast-track special courts have started functioning during the year for the speedy disposal of rape cases and cases registered under POXO Act. The vigilance setup in the state has been working effectively during the tenure of this government. The Vigilance and Anti-Corruption Bureau has initiated several innovative measures in consonance with the government policy of zero tolerance. 
the Department of Parliamentary Affairs will be organizing the student sabha, a debate with MLAs by student representatives in at least 70 assembly constituencies to forge healthy relationship between people's representatives and younger generation. On the occasion of the Golden Jubilee of Eman Lakshmi Vidu scheme, the housing department will take up the task of converting all twin houses constructed under the scheme into the single houses. A mobile application named eGirha will be launched to provide innovative ideas in housing sector. The Aswas Rental Housing Scheme will be extended to all medical colleges in the state. Non-resident Kerala Affairs Department has been acting as an in interface between the non-resident Keralaites and government for the last 25 years. The Norca Institute of Foreign Language provides demand-based language training for potential job seekers. Placement assistance is provided by Norca Roots Recruitment Division. Malayala Mission has pegged the state e-governance award for its Bhumi Malayalam open line course in the e-learning category this year. Action has been initiated for setting up a South Indian cultural center at Pinrai village in Kannur. The Center for International Film Research and Ar Archives, a research center of Kerala State Chalchitra Academy, will provide an opportunity for the students from foreign universities and other states of India. My government proposes to upgrade Kerala Kalavandam presently in the status of deemed to be university to a cultural university. The Vastu Vidya Gurukulam, in tandem with ASAP, proposes to launch training program in mural painting across Kerala. The State Archives Department has a rich collection of archival records from the 14th century in paper and palm leaves. Phase one of the Palm Leaf Museum, showcasing the rich history and culture of Kerala, was inaugurated in December at the Central Archives Building. The year that passed saw the Kerala put it itself on the map of post-COVID world tourism. Kerala tourism staged a strong comeback as a result of the well-planned activities of the government based on the influx of domestic tourists. Tourism sector recorded an all-time high in the first three quarters of 2022, it is a matter of immense pride for the entire state that the grandeur of Kerala tourism has been constantly acknowledged in the intermediate arena. Time magazine has included Kerala among 50 extraordinary destinations to explore in 2022 with the special mention of the Karma tourism launched by the government. My government is committed to attracting investment in the tourism sector by making available optimum industrial privileges, concessions, subsidies by considering tourism as an industry. Responsible tourism is being developed as a mechanism for facilitating the local economic development of Kerala. Accordingly, it has been decided to constitute Responsible Tourism Mission Society. Sports and Youth Affairs Department conducted 1 million goal campaign in November 2022, imparting basic football training to 1 lakh students, coinciding with the World Cup football with the assistance of Sports Kerala Foundation. My government accords top priority to modernization and renovation of sports infrastructure through Sports Kerala Foundation. Elite scheme has been introduced to impart scientific and advanced training to talented sports persons to equip them to compete in international competitions. Women's Football Academy has been established in Arnakulam. Kerala, which is a pioneer in many fields, also faces new challenges, but it also has immense opportunities before it. 
to make use of the same, my government is playing the role of a leader as well as facilitator. My government has the avowed aim to make Kerala a knowledge society. For this, comprehensive reforms have been initiated in the higher education sector. Kerala has had to traverse a tough path facing unprecedented health emergencies, natural calamities, and lastly, the pandemic. The approach of my government has been to tackle these difficult situations with people's participation. This has been widely acclaimed. We are now faced with the task of providing good quality employment to our younger generation. My government is leaving no stone unturned in this regard. My government is committed to provide social welfare and to promote fast economic growth and infrastructure development. For this, we need a positive approach from the union government, which will foster meaningful cooperative federalism. In the journey ahead, my government will take all possible steps involving the citizenry for attaining the development goals. Jai Hind. Order, order. Bahumana put a governor of Prasanka in the copy. Bahumana put Angangal Kum, Pata Pradinal Kipol with Anjay Nana. Bahumana put Angangal Kalam. Nai Prakavana Prasanka in the copy, which you should see. Order, order. Sabed and Adapa Samanath in the calendar. Baki Gamaya, Beda Giriti Kunda. January Rivat and Chanti, the Budanaj the Samalam, Uyakayana. Bahumana put a governor of Prasanka in. Nani Rekapur and Parmethin Mela Charcha, Randai Tiribati in February, only render in the rendered Vasan Lake Matramai, Parimin the Protono. Adeleka Uro Divosum, Uro Manikur with the Madigamai Vinuikan Lumana. Randai Tiribati Mun February on Nandi, with the Night of Sabaya of the Ripikan Nani Parmethil, Bedegri of the Ripiku and Agahik Nangal. Randai Tiribati Mun January Divata Tandi, Shinai to Cheke, Pandran Munikun by Bedegadigal, Nima Saba Secretary Pikandan. Order, order Sabai Paul Pirinadum. Then, I read the Tiruvati Moon, February on Nanti, Bodenaicha, Ravel and Badamaki Vundum, Cheranadano. 